This is just a quick video to show you how to run a network basic performance test. If you, you know, if you're curious, if you're getting full speed of your network in this example, which most of you have internally is gigabyte from computer to computer. This is not an internet test. <clears throat> this is just for an internal uh, network. If say if you have a file server or two computers and you're just curious if your network's running at full speed between them. Best way to do that is iperf. This is for Windows and Mac. Um, on Linux, this is a command line. If you're running Linux, you're probably already familiar with it. I look here for, at first. I'll show you my uh, virtual machine of Windows 10. Probably most of you are using this. It's iperf.fr. iperf.fr. You'll see a download link here and download for Windows. You're probably running Windows 64. Just download the newest one. I'm just saving on the desktop temporarily here for just for demonstration purposes. It's a zip file. It comes as a zip file. All you have to do is extract it. And in here you'll see you see this little DLL file. Don't worry about that. The iperf file here. Now it's a command line tool. And that might seem very scary except all you really have to do to run it is and it's a two you have to have it on two systems so you have to have it on this system and on another system one of them's going to act as a server and one of them as a client but what you'll need you'll just open a command prompt to run it but before we do that let's let's go over to our remote computer this is an old computer i have sitting over in the back and i've already downloaded iperf on it and you'll see now you have to type in the path name to this file which that can be really aggravating to type that in but there's a trick and this works on Mac or on Windows just grab the file and drag it on your command prompt and you'll see it fills in the user path for you so easy peasy just put a space and this one's going to be the server so I'm gonna put a dash s and hit s I mean enter and you'll see now when you do that it's going to ask for permission to allow through the firewall and you'll see it's listening now I'll go back to my client machine and I'm gonna do the client shouldn't ask for the firewall just drag it here you see it filled in my my name here my file path so I didn't have to type in that ridiculous thing Tack, this one is going to be instead of the server it's going to be a client so tax C and then I need the IP address of that server so t this one happens to be sitting at 10.19.68.25 you'd need to put in the your other computer's actual IP address not this one then just hit enter and you're going to see it's going to start and you'll notice over here it's running on both so you, the, you, you see it on the client to the left the server on the left and the client on the right and you'll see I'm getting 948 roughly 943 when you have a gigabyte that's 1000 megabytes you don't get you typically you know sustain 1000 there's a little overhead in the protocols and in the devices so you generally get 900 and something 948 is quite good actually so and if I want to run it again like run multiple tests one thing you can do instead of typing that whole command in again is just a lot of people might not realize this little tip just hit the up arrow on your keyboard and it refills in your last command and then hit enter and you'll see it starts over again and I'm getting 948 and that was on Windows to uh, uh, Windows let me just put this little remote machine down I have it on my Mac here also downloaded on a Mac you just instead of you just double click the zip file to unpack it I have a uh, command line here it's the exact same thing just type just drag it into the command when it'll fill in the path then I'm gonna type in client 
and I forgot. I uh, you have to tell it to go ahead and allow you through the first time. But I have it over here where I already did that, so let's do that again. .25 is where our server is listening and you see it's running on both sides. The reason I had that error was uh, it's an un unknown developer for Apple security. You would have to bypass security. I have a video on bypassing security on new applications. I was just trying to show you the unzipping. And if I wanted to run again, just hit the up arrow and tap her again. And let's put this one away. We're done with that. You know, I don't have to be just at, I have another server over here waiting at 11. And you'll see it's the same thing. You can't see the other, the server part of it, but it, you just connect to the other IP address. So, you know, if you're getting full speed on your network, you know your internal network is working well. That's not a speed test to your internet. This is your internal network. One thing I would point you, just like you saw the windows pop up, asking for a hole in the firewall, you may have, if you're trying to run the server on a Mac, you could have the same thing pop up and you want to uh, go to your security tab and firewall and turn the firewall off if it's not already off. The default is actually off on a Mac. I, had, I usually run mine on, but I turned it off for this. You don't need it for going out, just for it to receive it as a server incoming connection. And really that's all there is to it.